Hello and welcome to the Fly King Fisher winning post from the New Market Heat at headquarters. I'm Mohit Lalwani. As always, thank you for joining me. There's plenty on the show today. Let's get started with the Irish Thoroughbred Million. The Irish Thoroughbred delegation looked their cheerful best as they assembled in the paddock for their sponsored race, the Irish Thoroughbred Marketing Million, a five furlong dash for budding two year olds. Asahi reported sick in the morning and was withdrawn, reducing the field to six actual runners. Number one Afrojack garnered the maximum support in the batting ring. He looked alert in the paddock and his impressive track work had stripped him fit for his debut. Number two, Amazing Desire was under scrutiny as another progeny of his sire Ace had won on debut. Amazing Desire looked focused to the task. Number four, Relic Hunter was coming in with solid preparations and was the second in demand. His connection seemed confident that he would give a good account of himself. Shivalik Hero was the only one to have had a feel of the turf before and a distinct advantage over the lineup. He looked very much the part unlike during his previous outing. Your Lordship looked a trifle underdone and looked more to be on an educative mission for future success. Number 7, Scorn, another 30 to 1 shot, runs more with hope than conviction. The paddock looks and the market trends point to a three-way contest with Afrojack, Relic Hunter and Shivali Kiro being the top contenders. Well, the horses have left the parade ring and are on their way to the start. Let's take a look at Kingfisher Trailblazers before we come back to the runners for the Irish Thoroughbred Million. The Prudential Champion Trophy on the 9th of September had an air of expectancy about it. To be run over the shorter distance of 1,000 metres, this race was for two-year-olds. All seven runners were debutants. Most runners buy horses in the hope of leading in a classic winner and very often this million dollar question is answered on their very first outing. Trainers Dalla Storiwala stacked up his string against Malesh Naredus and between the two they had 90% of the field covered. The favourite from Dalla Storiwala's yard was Dr. Vijay Malia's own bred Colours Flying, a son of burden of proof out of Kalami Red. Colours Flying had been blazing the track in his preparations. Toriwala also sided Shararat, a daughter of Ace out of Shamal, a stallion who was making a debut himself in India. Naredo's strongest contender was a son of rebuttal called Shivalik Hero and with this battle between the two stables developing, the starter set them away. As they come towards the 800 meter marker and uh, bad last at the stage is Carletti. They're racing towards the 600 meter marker now with uh, Shararat still the leader, about three quarters of a length in front of Baringo in second position. Towards side is Colors flying. On the outside there is Astromia as they negotiate the bend and straight and upper home. Into the straight and it's Shararat towards the inside. It is now being joined on the outside by Colors flying, coming up nicely on the outside. Two and a half, three lengths for the back. There's Baringo dropping back. Then there is uh, Astromia with about 200 meters boat run. Shararat is still fighting it out from Colors flying on the outside, Sharada travelling better, a length and a quarter clear. Sharada is it, who wins this one from Colors flying, finishing up second. Then there is uh, Astromia finishing third. Very close fourth was uh, Shavali Hero as the race passed the finish. The debutant daughter of Ace provided the breeders a moment of not just excitement, but one of great promise as well. Shivali Hero ran green before finishing on well and will be in the winner's circle sooner than later as well Colors Flying, who did appear in slight discomfort just as he was about to produce his challenge. Well, it's the greatest joy I've had after Mystical's victory in Dubai because Ace is a very special stallion that we imported. He is, in fact, the best uh, maiden stallion to come into India. What I mean by maiden is a horse who hasn't been to stud. And uh, when I saw the filly, she looked the worst of the six, seven horses and uh, she was scraggly with a long coat, very small. And I told my friends and some people who were asking that if she can win, Ace is a champion. It 
it was yet another glorious moment of success for the Punala Sud farm with a new stallion. As the excitement of Ace's successful debut subsided just a bit, we got the story on Ace from the breeders at their farm. We had and we have tremendous confidence in Ace. I, in fact, uh, wanted to name his first son that we had retained after the word Ace of the Turf. At the moment, that's happened. We have all the confidence that he'll go all the way because he was bought as the best young horse to come into India to become a stallion. It was a very interesting uh, situation when we went to uh, buy this horse. There was a real marathon race between South Africa and India. Who was going to get the horse? And there was a ding-dong race going on neck to neck. And finally we pipped on the post and were able to secure him. So it's a very, very different thing than just going and buying a stallion. Two countrymen, two leading breeders were both dying to have the horse. But we won, so that was a good start, a winning start. And then with Shararat coming in, it's become even further a second winning start on debut. Feeling of exhilaration and um, we felt that the faith that we'd put into Ace as being a successful stallion and being an Ace in our roster of stallions had at least started off with a big bang. The reason we went behind Ace was because he was by Dane Hill, who in today's generation is the most successful sire of sires. Uh, he had a nice pedigree, uh, but what was most attractive to us apart from his pedigree um, was that he was a consistent Group 1 horse. Coolmore and Aidan O'Brien thought very highly of him and kept on putting him into Group 1 race after Group 1 race and uh, he, he was so consistent, he was always just within a mere two lengths or one length or half a length or a short head between horses like Azamor, Oratario, uh, Shiroko, uh, Ouija board and in several cases has reversed the order and beaten some of the world's best horses. He's a very easy horse to look after, he's acclimatized to India very well. Uh, he throws horses like himself, uh, they're tough, they're good looking uh, there's no nonsense about them and um, I'm sure that his progeny will race like he did. Ace himself uh, won uh, his first three races in a hat-trick, uh, they were all a mile. He didn't look back after that and he's won races from a mile and has uh, done very well in uh, races of 12 furlongs as well. Being by Daniel, he has um, uh, the genes of speed uh, out of his mother tea house. Um, he has middle distance and stamina. I think he'd be a horse who'd be able to throw horses that could do well from 7 furlongs to uh, 12 furlongs, depending on, of course, the mares he's uh, mated with. And it truly is very exciting when you have your juvenile winners. It's time for a break here. We'll be right back on the Fly King Fisher winning post. Don't go anywhere. Fly in high. Fisher Airlines, now connecting the US to India through Dubai, Hong Kong, Bangkok, London and Singapore. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post at the Newmarket Heath and moving right along. Next up is Get to Know Your Racing Pro. This one is Suraj Naredu. Jockey Suraj Naradu, India's number one. Hi, I'm Suraj Naradu. I've been riding for the last nine years. My parents' centre is Bangalore, and this story is about me. Suraj tells us what it was about horse racing that attracted him to this game. Since I was a kid, I used to move around horses, you know, the speed and the excitement during the races, it had always excited me. And uh, as far as I remember, I always wanted to be a jockey, so I, I don't think I would have been anything else other than a jockey. With so many champion jockey titles on his shelf, 
Does Suraj Naradu actually keep track? I think there are about five or six Bangalore championships, about five six Hyderabad championships. I've been champion jockey in myself for three four seasons. So yeah, I mean championships initially were very uh, important to me. Not it is it is still important to me, but uh, I want to focus more on graded races and uh, the classics now. The statistics, strike rate, and number of winners just can't lie. Suraj Naradu is definitely India's number one. I uh, know I don't uh, consider myself as the number one jockey. I have a lot to improve. I definitely want to be among the counted as the top jockeys in India, and uh, always been working hard and uh, trying to upgrade myself to get better. The best jockey in the country never to have won an Indian Classic tells us what this Pune Derby meant to him. No, Pune Derby was always special to me because my uncle had won seven times, my dad had won, and my family is also from Pune. I always wanted to win this race from the beginning. You know, I remember coming to the Pune race course as a kid and seeing my uncle and dad win the races, and I used to sit on the stands and you know cheer for them. I mean, this was a moment that I always dreamt of uh, uh, as a kid, and. Uh, after winning the i mean winning the derby is always special but to win the pune derby is really special for me for so many reasons suraj naradu also fondly remembers his last trip on mauritian soil i remember firstly when when we went to mauritius uh, i represented india uh, in the international jockeys challenge uh, in the young stars category and uh, these jockeys have been very very successful in their countries whom I competed against. Like Mikhail Barcelona has won the Epsom Derby in his first attempt. Maxim Guyan is a champion French rider and even from South Africa, wherever they came from, they all were top jockeys. To beat them in uh, such an event, that really excites me and uh, to hold your flag in a different country, you know, it, it gives goosebumps. And he tells us all about his trip to the USA. America was always a dream. I've tried very hard to get to America uh, because of the work permit, visas, and you know, there are other things. Uh, it's, it's not that easy to uh, get into America. I'm the first Indian jockey to even attempt to go and ride there, and I've been successful to firstly ride there and to have a winner, which is, you know, it's like the icing on cake. And I'm definitely looking forward to go back there. So, will Suraj let us in on the secret of his success? What exactly is his handicapping mantra? I always pick uh, rides not only basically on my handicapping. Yes, I do my homework, I watch their previous races, I watch the form and everything. Uh, but apart from that, sometimes when I work horses, I get a different feel. I go more on my feeling, you know, if I feel that this horse has got a chance, even if it is his previous one is bad, I, I try and uh, analyze what he's always done from as a baby. And I've been uh, more choosy than before because I like to have the best strike rate, you know, get the best strikes. And yes, among whatever I ride, I always do my best. With no Indian classic being a glaring anomaly on his otherwise faultless resume, what does Suraj Naradu plan to do about it? Bombay is a prime racing centre of India. You always want to come and achieve, have big success here in Bombay and uh, I've been lucky to have uh, very good owners to ride for uh, Mr. Vadwan who's been very supportive. He's got the best horses in India right now, he's really successful. And uh, we've been uh, having a very good partnership and I hope to come to continue my partnership with him for a very long time. And on his way out of the interview with the winning post, Suraj Naradu made some predictions for the Indian classics coming up ahead. Here's a tip for all my racing fans out there. I think all the Indian classics will be dominated by three horses, namely Hills and Stars from Vinayak Stables, Dandified from Vijay Singh's Yard and uh, Pronto Pronto from Mr. Imtiasek. I'll be very surprised if some other horse other than these comes out and wins the Indian Derby. <laughs> Well, and a true coming of age for Suraj Naredu. Next up on the Fly Kingfisher winning post is Kingfisher International. The Group 3 committee's prize over a mile attracted a full field of 13 into the parade ring. To be run over the short course Mark Walker Saddle 2, flying Fulton and the longest prized horse in the field. 
Flying Fulton had run a 5 length second to Rocket Man and was ahead of Better Be The One back in August and by most counts that seemed enough to warrant favoritism. He had run a respectable fourth in the Emirates Singapore Derby before that which pranked his form even further. Clint, the stronger of two runners from Cliff Brown Stable, had won that Emirates Singapore Derby and despite stepping down in trip and having not run since then, was looking to confirm the Derby form. With John Paul in the saddle, it wasn't inconceivable. Aruana.com from Desmond Coe's yard was also firmly supported. This came as no surprise as he had the informed Marrera in the saddle and was coming off a hat-trick of victories even though they were in lower classes. Racing in the committee's prize. As the starter set them away, it was the grey Aruana.com who was set alight by Moreira. On the inside, going up with Jamal Malik. Just in behind them, Zach Missile. Clint began well. He's nice and handy from Samurai Phoenix. Then Morris should Trillo keep away. Fat Kid getting a long way back. Sam, uh, silver on wings. And last of all is Tallatail. They march down the back. 1,200 metres to go. And Arowana.com for Moreira takes over in the committee's prize. Led by a length and a quarter over. You got it. In the third position is the favourite Flying Fulton racing in the clear. Down on the inside, Best Knight. Then Jamal Malik at the 1,000. Clint travels OK over on the fence. It's being uh, closely attacked attended by Zach Missile, then Samurai Phoenix caught out wide, Morris Trillo going through into a vacated spot, next of all then is Keep Away as they swing down the side from Fat Kid, Silver on Wings and last of all is Tallatail. Down before the bend, 650 metres to go and Arowana.com, the smart youngster on uh, trial at the 1600 metres shows the way, you got it in second, Best Knight sneaking up behind them, flying Fulton close and handy, they were followed then as they turn by Jamal Malik, Clint trying to pick his way through the pack, Morris Trillo the inside, then Zach Missile, Samurai Phoenix keep away and Fat Kid but Arowana.com, 300 metres to go, still by a length over, you got it, here's Flying Fulton produced down the outside and Best Knight sneaking up on the fence, Followed by Jamal Malik and Zach Missal. Arowana.com joined by the favourite Flying Fulton. Best Knight finishes on well. Flying Fulton went to the lead. Best Knight through to second, but Flying Fulton takes out the committee's prize. Flying Fulton wins at a length over Best Knight. It's a good throw. It's, uh, you know, first major win here, and it's always difficult when you, you know, we used to win big races. They just seem to happen at home, but you come to a new country and you struggle along for a while so it's a, a good thrill to break the ice today. He's an interesting horse, David Ellis bought him at the ready to run so at uh, Karakarit and we paid a bit of money for him and he won a listed race at two as a colt and we really liked the horse but he just went off the ball a bit and uh, we made the hard decision to geld him and, and you look at the horse he, he's a beautiful athlete and David always buys a beautiful athlete and and uh, he's come too as, a, as an older horse so um, I think he'll go on with it from here. Yeah, he's a very consistent horse, very honest horse, and uh, Mark's really coached him on lovely. And um, you know he deserved this win because he's been around the mark in, in some good races. You know through the four-year-old series and and other starts, he's been thereabouts. And um, very consistent horse, and he really deserved that win today. Flying Fulton, the son of Flying Spur, came home strongly to record his first ever group victory in Singapore. Best night from Brian Dean's yard found some of his old form even as Clint travelled late looking like a serious Gold Cup horse. Well on that note it's time for a short break here on the Fly King Fisher winning post. We'll be back, don't go anywhere. Flying high. Fisher Airlines, now connecting the US to India through Dubai, Hong Kong, Bangkok, London and Singapore. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. Moving right along, the horses were at the start for the Irish Thoroughbred Million. Let's go see how this one worked out. They're off and racing for the Irish Thoroughbred Marketing Million. A little slow in the stride there, losing about five, six minutes in the start is gone. And as they settle down to race, there's a rush for the early lead with Afrojack just taking it up from Relic Hunter in the middle. On the outside, there's Amazing Desire. A gap about two lengths further back there, but bridging up the gap is Shivalik Hero. Another three lengths further back there is uh, 
your lordship and out of the running scorn. As they race past the 600 meter mark and now Afrojack still the leader about three quarters of a length in front of uh, Relic Hunter in second position. Shivalik Hero moving to third. On the outside there's a male desire. Then there is uh, your lordship as they negotiate the Benin straight and upper home. Afrojack comes in home first being pushed and now being joined on the outside by Relic Hunter on the outside and Shivalik Hero getting a lovely race on and going ahead. It's Shivalik Hero now who goes ahead about a length and a half two in front of Afrojack and Relic Hunter on the outside with about 150 meters more to run there and it's uh, Shivalik Hero about two lengths clear. Shivalik Hero now easily wins this one from Relic Hunter finishing up second. Afrojack third and there's amazing desire followed by your lord. Shivalik Hero then endorsing the belief that a run experience can be so crucial. Relic Hunter did put up a fight but that was not going to deter Shivalik Hero and Suraj Naradu was spot on with all his moves and ensured a fairly easy victory in the end. And well, that's all we have on this episode of the Fly Kingfisher Winning Post. As always, thank you for joining me. Till I see you next week, goodbye and may the horse be with you. Winning Post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.